In cinema, some characters scream without saying a word. What kind of magic spell do we use? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 WTF hairstyles in movies. You've been putting it up your whole life, you just didn't know it. For this list, we're counting down the most bizarre and devastating haircuts worn by movie characters. Did you ever have to find a way to survive? And you knew your choices were bad. Number 10, Irving Rosenfeld, American Hustle. Just look at me, all right? Look me in the eye. This means a lot to you, right? That knife, oh. play it, you present it, all right? In David O. Russell's Oscar-nominated Sting flick, Christian Bale portrays Irving Rosenfeld, based on a real-life con man named Mel Weinberg. I told you not to put metal in the science of him. What'd you do that for? Given the 70s setting, there's nothing especially wrong with the style, but it's clear that Irving seems to have a bit of trouble up top. There's a contrived comb-over at work here, one that can easily make anybody look ridiculous with just a gust of wind or even a little prodding from an associate. Always take a favor over money. I think Jesus said that as well. In the underworld that Rosenfeld lives within, the mop top makes him an easy target, as no amount of bravado can save him from a hairpiece fail. You should have done that. Number 9. David Kleinfeld, Carlito's Way. Give me a piece, Dave. What? In Brian De Palma's gangster film, Sean Penn plays a mobbed up lawyer that loyally stands by his pal Carlito Brigante. And one could argue that his troubling hairstyle is actually more offensive than his corrupt techniques. I'm so sick of hoods like that coming into my office, my office, thinking they can push me around. Despite the obvious receding hairline, David simply refuses to give up on the look as a whole. Although maybe the massive set of curls is simply a power move. I'm a lawyer. After all, a man with a cut this ridiculous must have his reasons. Or maybe David is just trying to fit in. Unfortunately, it's a look that only goes over well in a darkly lit club, as Mr. Kleinfeld has one of the most aggressive hairlines in 90s cinema. People, huh? Number 8, Queen Amidala. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. She's the mother of Princess Leia and clearly has strong beliefs when it comes to intergalactic grooming. I've come before you to resolve this attack on our sovereignty now. In theory, the epic costumes and elaborate hair designs accentuate Padme's facial features, which is a plus. But some of the hairstyles can be distracting too, most notably the large-scale upside-down heart bun. Federation has gone too far this time. Certainly, Queen Amidala intends to impress, but it's almost too much hair bravado to handle. Our people are dying, Senator. We must do something quickly to stop the Federation. Sure, everybody appreciates a classic double bun a la Princess Leia, yet her mom seems to have drawn inspiration from some crazy dreams. This body is not capable of action. I suggest new leadership is needed. Number seven, Bobby Pellet, Horrible Bosses. Three hours late. What's the deal? Now here's a character with a cluttered mind and a disastrous sense of style. When Bobby Pellet takes over the family biz, he plays the role of a confident businessman. Oh yeah, we gotta trim some of the fat around here. Trim the, what do you mean by trim the fat? I want you to fire the fat people. It's a bold move to bring further attention to a questionable comb over, yet Bobby sells the look as best he can. I didn't, I didn't realize I had to tell you every time I want to take a dump. Unfortunately, the faux masculinity only brings more attention to the hair, which is actually quite well-groomed, yet still deeply suspicious. Given Bobby's personality, it's more than possible he might have some type of secret stash up there. Well, maybe that excuse would have fallen when my dad was here, but I'm in charge now. Number six, Turl, Battlefield Earth. Stupid <laughs> humans. In the year 3000, this man becomes the security chief for the Cyclos. Though Turl's ultimate goal includes both money and power, his long dreadlocks give him more of a vagabond look, at least from a 21st century perspective. But have you looked at my file, sir? It explicitly says that this is a temporary assignment. In the year 3000, however, dreadlocks seem to be all the rage, with Turl leading the way with his unique style. Are you hungry, little fella? Yes. Obviously, this is going to take a while. Of course, Turl also has a giant skull, so he's got plenty of volume going on too. 
Even so, he's a man that just doesn't seem too keen on hair product or two-in-one shampoo and conditioner combos. Exterminate all man animals at will and happy hunting! Number 5. Mugatu Zoolander I invented the piano key necktie! I invented it! As the antagonist of Ben Stiller's model film, this fashion mogul sets his own trends. Only someone like Mugatu could rock an outlandish perm like this. Todd! Are you not aware that I get farty and bloated with a foamy latte? It's got the flair of a classic 18th century pianist, only with a sharp central part that creates a jarring effect. Of course, the thick goatee adds to the WTF vibe as well. Welcome to your relaxation time. Let this wonderful 80s classic soothe you. It's a wholly unique look for the modeling industry, and one suitable for a genuine villain with an eye for fashion. Derelict! It is a fashion, a way of life inspired by the very homeless, the vagrants, the, the crack whores that make this wonderful city so unique. Mugatu seems to speak loudly even when he's not speaking at all. And his insane haircut is a big reason why. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! Number 4. Charlie Kaufman Adaptation I should get coffee. Coffee would help me think. Based on the real-life experiences of screenwriter Charlie Kaufman, this character's haircut seems to exemplify the very being of Charlie Kaufman. Oh, she looked at my hairline. She thinks I'm bald. Symmetrical and the antithesis of stylish. There's nothing incredibly horrifying about the cut, aside from the fact that a grown man would sport this type of mini afro. You're just a lonely, old, desperate, pathetic drug addict! It seems well-kept, but it also seems a bit frizzy, too just like the troubled character's mind. This is the kind of WTF hairstyle that implies that Charlie's been wearing it for some time, and that he's afraid or perhaps ignorant of modern trends. It's just there, and it never changes. I'm the guy you yelled at this morning. I need more. I'm the one who thought things didn't happen in life. Charlie Kaufman is a man who rejects formulaic writing, and he's also a man who rejects formulaic hair. Bob says, you sound like you're in a cult. Number three, Ernie McCracken, Kingpin. I need you now more than ever I need you. In this Farrelly Brothers comedy, a bowler named Big Earn has some big ideas. It's easy to see that he's been around the block, mainly because of his deranged hairstyle. So which opponent poses the biggest threat to you in the tournament? <laughs> if I get drunk and fall down hurt myself, I might lose. It's like a matted puppy dog got blown around in the wind and landed on Ernie McCracken's head. He delivers on the goods. Look at him pump up this crowd. There are many things happening with this look, whether it's the notable bald spot on the back of his head or the forgotten clumps of hair that Big Earn refuses to part with. It's what you might call a hot mess. And given that Ernie is not a young hipster trying to stand out, well, that makes it all the more devastating. I remember that night too, and I don't remember anybody twisting your arm. Number two, Henry Spencer, Eraserhead. Hello, I'm Henry. This character's hairdo has become almost iconic within the realm of independent cinema. Like many troubled men in film, the bizarre nature of the hairstyle complements the personality, with Harry's dome pretty much taking on a life of its own. I didn't know if you wanted me to come or not. Where have you been? This David Lynch film follows a surreal narrative, with this WTF hairstyle acting as perhaps the most constant aspect of the film. One cannot predict Henry's decision making, but one can be sure that he'll be sporting an electrifying head of hair. Oh, you are sick. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. All right, Dick, give me some of that rock and beat. So, uh, does he have strong lips? Sometimes I see him dance around the house in my underwear. Doesn't make me Madonna. Never will. Number one, Ruby Rod, The Fifth Element. Here he is, the one and only winner of the Gemini Crockett Contest. So here's a man of the future. As the preeminent talk show host of the year 2263, Ruby Rod rolls with a futuristic hairstyle. Unbelievable! He's just a bit flamboyant, but you gotta respect the attention to detail with this platinum blonde cut, which features some type of frontal apparatus. So tell me, my man, 
You nervous in the service? It's an impressive yet WTF kind of look, and one that's definitely unfit for a baseball cap. Ooh. Or, if Mr. Rod does wear a baseball cap in the future, it only makes sense to wear it backwards given the enormous protruding bun. Freeze those knees, my please, cause Herb's in the place and he's on a cake. Yesterday's frog will be tomorrow's friend. This is a hairstyle perfected for the public, as there's really no point in sporting this hairstyle unless you're constantly in the public eye and hoping that people will keep asking, why? What was that? It was bad. It, it had nothing, no fire, no energy, no nothing. You know I have a shoulder right here, you know? Hmm? Do you agree with our list? What movie hairstyle makes you say WTF? That depends. Do you see me? For more weird top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.